Hello and welcome to Annie's Creative Studios. I'm Heather Valentine from The Sewing Loft and today is all about the holidays. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a raw edge applique while stitching together a few blocks from the Tis the Season quilt pattern. Before we get started, I'd like to invite you to visit Annie's Creative Studios Facebook page. There you'll find all sorts of goodies, from new projects that are coming out to fun classes from instructors like me. Now, let's take a look at the supply list we need for today's project. You can see I've already laid it out for you on the table and it ranges from an assortment of pretty fabrics to our templates to some paperback fusible that's going to be key for our applique. I've even pulled out an assortment of presser feet that I'll use and it's always best to start your project with a fresh new needle. You'll also need a cutting mat, rotary cutter, and a nine and a half inch square ruler. This is going to be key to completing your block. Let's dive into the prep work. This quilt requires 30 blocks, which means that there's going to be 30 different appliques. So if you've never done applique before, I want you to refer to your pattern and you're gonna actually find in the back on page four, the templates. There's going to be a Christmas tree and even a stocking. So I suggest that you trace out your templates onto a piece of cardstock, maybe a manila folder or even the back of a cereal box. I've gone ahead and I've cut mine out of just plain cardstock because I had it laying around. So after you have it all, all cut out and you're ready to go. You can see I've got mine there the same shape as my pieces. Oops, see that one's all mirrored. I'm ready to go. I can take this and actually trace it down onto my paperback fusible. Now if you've never worked with paperback fusible, it is shiny on one side and has little bumps. That's actually the adhesive and that's what you're going to put face down and then the other side is a wax paper almost like what you would find in your kitchen cabinet. So we're going to take our template and I happen to be tracing the tree. So we're going to place it down and you want to leave enough spacing between your two so that you can cut each piece out and then fuse it directly down onto the fabric that you'll be using. And with a pencil you're just going to tr simply trace around each one of your templates. So you're gonna to wanna to repeat the process and make sure that you have 15 of each design. Now, one thing that I wanna point out is that for the stocking, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do a few in different directions. So maybe you'll trace a few going to the right and then trace a few going to the left. After you have them traced out, you're going to fuse them down onto your fabrics. Now I've already gone ahead, but I wanted to show you a few things. So let's look at this one. You can see that it's fused down. Now on this piece of fabric, my print is directional. That means that it would look kind of funny if I put the tree going in this direction. So you really wanna be careful when you're fusing your template to the back of your fabric. So just follow the manufacturer's instructions on your paperback fusible and give it a, a little bit of a press with your iron and then after you're all set and you've fused it, you want to just go ahead and cut it out. Now I want to make a suggestion that cutting really counts here. So you want to go slow and just take your time. You don't want any raw jagged edges because that will really show on your end project and you want them to be nice and smooth and look as clean cut as they possibly can be. All these little details will really add up to your finished project, making your quilt look amazing for years to come. Another thing to add, another really good tip, when you're making a raw edge applique, it's important to use a tighter weave fabric. Now, if you're using quilting fabrics, that's fine. You won't have to worry about it. 
But if you're using something like a burlap or even a canvas, you might want to really look at the quality of it. And the reason I say that is because the larger the weave, the more likely it will be to fray over time. Think about when you launder it and, you know, just everyday wear and tear. So you'll want to go through and cut out all of your templates. You can see it's pretty straightforward here. And then after you're done, you'll be attaching them right to the center of your block. And we've got a few here because I've already just started to get it ready. Now that we've cut out all of our appliques, it's time to actually attach it to the center of our block. This is going to be the seven and a half inch piece that's going to be our center square. So I'm using a white on white printed fabric and you really want to make sure that you're looking at it to make sure that you're attaching the applique to the right side. Trust me, you don't want to make a mistake. I've done that before. So we're going to take our appliques and it'll have the paper backing on one side and the pretty fabric on the other. And you're just going to bend a corner, maybe kind of roll it a little bit and peel off that paper backing. You can see that it clearly <clears throat> just very smoothly comes apart and it leaves you with a glossy adhesive that's on the back. And you want to take that and put that on your square wrong side down with the adhesive, that shiny side down, and just take it over to the iron and give it a quick press. Now, when you're positioning it, you wanna make sure that there's at least a quarter of an inch all around, because that's gonna be your seam allowance. Remember, we still have to attach the pretty fabrics around the outside to create the rest of the block unit. So go ahead and just attach all of these appliques, and then we'll be ready to head to the machine and stitch all of our pieces in place. All right, so my applique pieces are all fused to the center of my blocks, and I am now at my sewing machine. So you need to make sure that your machine is set up properly, right, for everyday stitching. So we wanna have a full bobbin, a coordinating thread, and your presser foot needs to be correct. So you can either use the basic standard foot that comes with your machine, the J foot, or if you're like me, you'll use the quarter inch with guide, also known as the patchwork or the quilting foot. Personally, I like that foot because the guide bar lines up right against the edge of the fabric, providing me with the perfect seam allowance every time. Now, another thing that I want to tell you about my machine setup is that I've gone ahead and kind of organized my space. I have my sashing off to the side, all of my blocks in a row, and I am ready to pretty much just go for it. I'm going to treat this as more of like a chain piecing operation and just continue along all of the blocks. So again, your machine is on a straight stitch, center coordinating thread. You're going to put that new needle in that we talked about earlier and we're going to just get ready to stitch. So we're going to start with our block and the nine and a half inch sashing that we cut previously and we're going to line it up right at the edge and we're going to stitch straight down but stop about two inches from the edge because we're going to need to join that seam later. So let me show you what I mean, and then you can see it all in action. So we're going to... You can see that patchwork foot just guides me right there to the very edge. Now I've stitched and I've got about two inches and I'm going to stop right there. Okay, you can see. And now I'm going to flip this piece out and I'm just gonna finger press it. You can take it to the ironing board, but for demonstration, I'm just gonna go straight around and I'm gonna take my next piece of sashing and align it right along the edge. You don't even need any pins for this because we're just straight sewing. 
and we're going to stitch this piece all the way down now, straight to the edge, okay? And you're gonna continue turning it out, finger pressing it down, and stitching all around, around all four sides. Okay, now we're on that last piece, and we're gonna start straight up at the top, but we wanna push this piece out of the way. Hope you can all see that, out of the way. Line up at the top, move it down, make sure we finger pressed our seam allowance down, and stitch this straight in place. Now we're gonna flip this one out and you're gonna see that we've still got this little Y seam. So we're going to turn this back down again, line it up, and go right over where we started, right over that seam. I would say start about a half an inch back. I like to just over stitch it. And then straight to the end, just as though you were sewing your regular sash piece on. Lift up, and then when you're done, your block's ready. Just take it over to the ironing board and give all those seams a really good press. So I've taken all of my blocks over to the pressing board and given them a nice press around and you can see that they're all nice and flat. I'm back at the machine and ready to actually add all of the decorative stitching around my raw edge applique. There's different types of stitching that you can use around your applique. You can use a decorative stitching from your machine. Most people tend to use the blanket stitch or you can do a free motion which is where you just kind of play. It gives you a more whimsical outlook, more of like a thread drawing or a marker outlook all along the edge of your design. That's the one that I'm going to show you today. I personally love it and I use it on almost all of my projects consistently. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your machine is set up properly. We're going to change out our thread. I've already gone ahead and done that. And, I, and you're going to use, let me take it off and I'll show you. I had already preset my machine. But for the free motion stitching, you're going to use an open toed. It's a spring loaded foot and it's an open toed free motion. You can see the little openness down at the bottom and that allows you to look straight down into your design. So you're going to put that on your machine, make sure it's nice and secure, and depending on your machine, check your owner's manual, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the feed dogs are down. That's these little, these little dogs in here, they're called dogs, and basically what they do is they grab the fabric as it's pulling um, through the machine with each stitch rotation and pulling it back to move it forward. Now we don't want to use them because we want our hands to be doing all of the action here. So on my machine, I'm actually touching it and let's watch and you'll see them drop down. Are you ready? Okay, now watch as I turn the handle, you're gonna see it drop. Okay, they're down below. On your machine or on different machines, sometimes it's a little button in the back, a little switch that you push, but on my machine it's on the front. So again, check your owner's manual and you'll be ready to go. Then it's really all about placing your piece of fabric down with your applique. And the first thing you may wonder is why am I doing this now and didn't I do it when I first put down my applique onto the center square? And I'm gonna tell you, the for me, I like to have more surface space to physically move around, and just adding that little bit of sashing really helps me personally, and I think that you'll get great support out of it as well. So I suggest that we kind of do things in this order. It'll be a little bit easier, and especially if you're just beginning and you really want to get the technique down and not be frustrated. So I'm going to Drop my presser foot. See, now my machine's telling me that I needed to lower it from the back. So I've dropped my presser foot in place 
and I am ready to go. I am keeping it on the straight stitch, which is my standard stitch. My feed dogs are down, and it's just about picking a spot and starting. Just gonna guide it all around the outline of your applique, and this is really just to reinforce that the applique stays in place and also give it a little bit of design out element. It doesn't have to be perfect, this is really just supposed to be fun and whimsical. Think of it like drawing with your thread. Now when you get to the beginning, you can stop there or you can go around again. Personally, I like to go around it a few times. I think that um, it shows a little more character and I never worry about whether or not I went over my seam exactly. I actually like it when it doesn't go exactly. Can you tell somebody's excited for me to start free motion stitching? I swear, the sound of the machine is like white noise in the background to them. So let me finish and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now the one thing you may notice is that I'm not even following the same direction that I started the first time. Free motion stitching lets you go from front to back, side to side, really in any direction. If you even want to turn, you can turn. You don't have to worry about anything. You just move it as you want. Because the feed dogs are not grabbing it. look really cute. Once you're finished with all of your blocks, we're going to be ready to put them all together and lay them out for assembly. Now that we've got a few of our blocks stitched up, it's all about the ruler work. That's right, the cutting. We're going to go back to that nine and a half inch square ruler that I showed you in the supply list. And this ruler is actually going to do all the heavy lifting for us. It's going to allow us to create that off-center square without any measuring. We're going to take our nine and a half inch ruler and simply place it on the block. And you'll see that you can actually kind of outline it. I like to mark, um, line my marks up in the corners and make sure that everything is diagonal, you know, spaced accordingly. And then it's all about just rotary cutting along each side. So when you're done, you'll see that the block has that really fun shape to it. And it was all done by the ruler. You didn't have to measure anything specific. So go ahead and cut out the rest of your blocks. Remember, you need 30 blocks in all. So get cutting. All right. We have finished assembling all of our blocks. That means that we've cut out our appliques, fused them in place, attached all of our sashing, and cut everything out after we free motion stitched it, of course. And now it's time for the final quilt top layout. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of quick tips, and I know then that you've got the rest of the quilt sandwich down, because you guys are pros. All right, let's take a look at my blocks. You can see that I've got a few blocks here. I just pulled four out for demonstration and they have different colors. And I wanted to show you that you wanna think about this. Like you don't want your quilt to look like this with two of the same together or even kind of like this, right? You wanna make sure that they're weighted. So what I suggest is you lay out your rows in a nice order so that you can see all three. So I would lay, I hope I'm getting all this on the camera, I would lay these three out together and then I would start my next row and make sure that they were in a different order. Okay? So once you've got your layer, your layout all set, you're going to head back to the machine and zip all of these together with a quarter of an inch stitch 
everything a quick press and then your quilt top is complete. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a raw edge applique while stitching together your Tis the Season quilt blocks. Don't forget to follow along and join us on the Facebook page where you'll find sneak peeks, new projects, and even classes coming your way from creative instructors like me.